So you, you watched right. it on TV, but it was uncut. It, it was, was on coming British on TV. Television. It was British yeah. TV, so it's uncut. The only thing you're not allowed to show on British TV is an erect penis. And even really? that, I think you can show, but uh, maybe not on the BBC. Maybe these okay. rules huh. have changed, though. This is I'm talking about when I'm a kid. Yeah, I just remember that used to be the rule where it's like the BBC will show anything but an erect That's penis. That's the one yeah. bridge to. Yeah, and how old are you again? You're 13. 13. You know, Perfect. so no. I know what this movie is. Right. Like vaguely, because if it's 13, I'm, you know, this is a few years after Showgirls came out. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, that's the like famous sex movie. Great. I can't wait to watch this. It's going right. to be an awesome experience for a 13 year old horny boy. Which is definitely and, like, how I was watched like that it the big first moment. Time too. Yeah. Well, exactly. And then I yeah. watch it and like even 13 year old David Five Minutes in was like, oh, no, no, this, right. This is not going to satisfy whatever I was looking at to satisfy. For me, one of the least erotic it's, experiences it is, movie watching. It is incredibly aggressively unsexy. It's right, really it's almost, bizarre how unsexy almost this ruinous. Is. Yeah. Like no, at several the, points during this movie, I'm like, no one involved in the making of this film has had sex. No, or knows what it looks like. No, it, it's war on the breast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was in pain. Yeah. The eroticism of the breast, I guess, yeah. is the better way yeah. to put it, because it's certainly. It celebrates its. Oh, I thought uh, you meant physical war, and I was well, like, no, I felt the physical oof, pain. No, there's I mean, a lot of bouncing. But in all <laughs> senses, in terms of the imagery, in terms of the energy of the film, like everything about how this film positions anyway. sex, the human body, but dialogue. I, mean, I between think it two has a lot of honesty like, about like the uh, yeah utter commodification <laughs> yes, uh, going yeah. on in these. But anyway. Uh, so instead, I was just transfixed by this really weird movie, what like when I was thirteen. Right. And then, yeah. like not long after that, you know, like I mean, basically, when I was a teenager, I had friends who were uh, it, certainly any friend I can think of who was obsessed with this movie was gay. Not to uh, paint with a broad brush or whatever, sure. but certainly, I, mean, I already did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of Caroline repainted the whole studio, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you it know, was broadly. And so, I mean. My, I have seen this movie many times. Sure. My my former roommate Andy, who I've shouted out on this podcast before, because he was a big Clifford fan. Hey, hey li- listen back to that episode, folks. Uh, his family named their dog after Clifford, which is still to me the weirdest thing in the world. Because why is that weird? Well, because one, there's a famous dog called Clifford. Well, sure. But they named, they after named him after Short Martin Clifford. Short's character in the movie Clifford. Oh, okay. It's like Very if you name your dog now. Beethoven because you like the composer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why Charles Gordon's family named him. <laughs> Beethoven, right? right. Oh my and God, also, you in the plot of Clifford, they name Clifford Clifford because they like the books. You should have named the dog Mason if you wanted to do it right. Yeah, that would. Have been. I want to say Mason. <laughs> That's it. Um, uh, he loved my my roommate Andy, former roommate yeah. Andy, loved this movie, and we used to do different places at each other a lot, and a lot of other lines. It mm-hmm. was it was a big movie for him. So I've always known this movie as like a beloved camp classic even if it's never been one of my movies exactly sure. but like i've seen it a lot and it's yeah sort of... i've like probably seen this movie five times yeah. i really? definitely watched it the first time i there was an entertainment weekly i think it was 2003 cover story the top 25 cult movies of all time sure and i was like 13 14 that was the exact age where i wanted to read that cover story and be like what are the movies that can make me think i'm cooler <laughs> right, than right, other right. people because i appreciate them on a them. different right, right. And so I, for a while, was like systematically trying to go through all of them, either from renting them or scanning when they were on TV. And so I feel like I probably watched it for the first time with that frame around it, but also but as also like, on cable TV. And as a horny 14 year old boy being like, well, look, I can't lose. It's showgirls. I'm going to get can something and out of you this will. Movie. Right. And then by the time like minute three happened, I was like, well, I'm not liking this <laughs> <laughs> on that level at all. And then it just became this, like, fascinating curio object. And it was like, I would watch movies, especially at that time, things I knew had cult statuses. Yeah. I'd watch them be like, what are the lines I have to know to be able to quote back to people to show that I get <laughs> sure. it? Of course you did. Because I even remember at the time, like, UCB had a long-running show called Showgirls, the best movie ever made, I yeah, think. Right. Oh, and right. it would be, like, every Saturday at midnight, they do, like, a Showgirls restaging. Like, it was, like, peak New York City Showgirls is, like, a barometer for whether or not you get it. And I wanted to like, you know, pre digest the stuff. Um, but, but then it was always just like a thing with like friends. If it was like finding a movie to watch, I'd be like, we should watch Showgirls, And it became this curio object for me because it, it is high camp, but also it's such a fundamentally fucking sad movie. Like there's this weird, um, masochistic element to how many times I saw this when I was a teenager because this movie made me so uncomfortable. You're weird. Because this movie weaponizes sex in a way that totally turns me off and also emotionally is like devastating. I mean, that's the movie he thought he was making. Right. 
Which, even if the movie doesn't totally work, it's still, like, a deeply bruising experience. I mean, if yes, yes. And if you were just to explain the story without actually seeing the movie. Right. right. Explain the story. Because <laughs> it's very low light on story. Yes. It's like, woman moves to Vegas. She wants to be a showgirl. And she does end the film. Right. She's, first, she's <laughs> a stripper. She gets noticed by a showgirl. She becomes the showgirl. Yep. She usurps head show girl by pushing her down the stairs and sleeps with her boyfriend uh, in a totally normal way. Yep. Their sex, the way they sleep together, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it tracks. And then uh, almost immediately realizes that the, you know, the cost of fame yes. is too high and leaves. By way of her friend's <laughs> gang rape. Right. Which we'll get to. Oh, yes. It's 